Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal and today we're gonna be reviewing V Rising, a new early access survival crafting PvP PvE title from Stunlock Studios. If you haven't heard about them, maybe you've heard about their previous title, Battle Right. It was actually a very promising and a very popular game for some time, but now sadly that game is absolutely dead. So when they announced V Rising, I was genuinely interested to see how is this game going to look like, because whenever you make a survival title with like PvP, PvE elements, this can go two ways. It can either be semi-successful, very successful, or it can be something which no one is going to play. Now, I was genuinely surprised when I saw that there is a hundred thousand people active yesterday on Steam and I was like, okay, there is a lot of people enjoying this game and actually going from Steam reviews, it's actually very positive and mostly positive right now. So in this review, I'm going to talk a lot about good things. I'm going to talk about very problematic things which I think are going to be some of the challenges that um, Stunlock will have to deal with later on if they want to maintain the amount of people that they have playing the title. And also we're going to be talking about some bad things and uh, some problems which I think uh, shouldn't be in the title in the first place. So first off, when you're thinking about V Rising, uh, this game draws a lot of inspiration from different titles. Keep in mind the basis of the title when it comes to the camera movement, when it comes to how your character kind of walks around, what abilities you can use and how those abilities work, the foundation of this is definitely Battle Right. But at the same time, keep in mind, this is not as polished as Battle Right combat, and at the same time, it's a little bit different because I do believe this combat is a little bit slower compared to that. But, of course, this game draws a lot from different titles. Like, for example, you start off as just a hatchling vampire with nothing, you know nothing. So what you have to do is obviously go into this world, into this map, which has different biomes and each biome is going to have different types of enemies and also those enemies are going to have uh, different levels, so they're going to be stronger. So you go out in this world and you start collecting stuff. You start basically crafting resources and uh, swords and armors, which is going to be useful for you. At the same time, by actually like chopping down trees, chopping down stones and doing that, you have an ability to make your own castle and making your own castle is definitely, it's going to be the foundation of your title where that's going to be your HQ. So once you build your castle, you can basically build castle walls around it and inside of that castle you can build various different refinement and production objects which are going to refine stone that you collect or refine wood or various other things like for example a smelter which is going to smelt your ores as you basically collect them throughout this map basically doing everything so you can progress through that by building uh, your character and basically building your own castle. This game also has item levels, so basically everything you do equip in this game, every new piece of armor, is going to give you a higher item level itself. And after that, you basically go out on the map and you try to hunt different bosses. By defeating those bosses, you unlock more uh, resources, more recipes, and you basically unlock uh, different things that, like different refinement um, objects, which you're going to be placing in your castle to basically be able to craft that new armor. So, for example, you have to kill one dude who is going to give you like a recipe to smelt your ores. Before that, you obviously cannot do it, so you have to go kill him. Now, obviously, each one of those bosses has its own item level, and each one of those bosses has its own attacks and different abilities that it uses on you. Also, when you defeat uh, some of those bosses, you also get abilities from them, so you can mix and match different abilities you get from different bosses and basically use them as your own character. So from that standpoint, there is different abilities you can use, it. you can really like adapt your character how you want comparing to your own playstyle and what kind of a weapon you're gonna be using, either a bow and arrow or a crossbow or maybe you're gonna be using a, a sword, maybe you're gonna be using a polearm or maybe you're gonna be using an axe or something like that. Now let's go back to the servers a little bit because before you even start playing this game, you can select different servers that you can be a part of. So this game can either be PvE or PvP. You have PvE servers, PvP servers, and full loot PvP servers, meaning that if you die in this game, or well, if you get ganked or killed in a full loot PvP servers, 
they can take everything from you but if you're playing on a normal pvp server you basically lose uh, some of the equipment like for example some of the resources you have gathered and you don't lose your own equipment this can be problematic if you lose your equipment because building up that equipment requires a decent amount of resources which obviously requires a lot of that grind to basically go chop trees get ores get stone and basically smell that refine that and you know start building up some more stuff you can also have your own private uh, world that you can create and in that world you can basically set different parameters of of your server like if you want more resources if you want less resources uh, what kind of a game do you want when it comes to different enemies how strong are they going to be how weak are they going to be is it going to be pvp is it going to be pve what is going on so you can kind of adapt your own world as you want and at the same time as i said you have normal pve servers which are going to be just you know pve there is no uh, combat throughout you cannot be ganked and at the same time you cannot be raided and that's also something which i want to talk about you can be raided in this game so for example this is like rust so you can make dynamite that you can plant next to someone's walls blow it up steal everything and destroy their castle that's one of the segments of this game which um can be a deal breaker for a lot of people when they consider pvp but of course you do have servers which have pvp only and they don't have a castle raiding or maybe they have a set amount of times when you can raid someone when basically raiding comes um uh, is enabled and this is where some of the first problems come because when you're playing on a pve server that's all right because generally you don't have to worry about being ganked you don't have to worry about someone destroying your castle you can just go out and explore and basically fight your way through different enemies at the same time fighting bosses alone if you're on a pve server can be a little bit problematic because some bosses actually have a lot of aoe damage which can be tricky to evade sometimes it can definitely be a challenging uh task especially if you don't uh if you haven't never played the battle right in the first place like uh, some of those mechanics can be problematic so that's pve pvp it tells you you need well or it's recommended to have a four player group so when you're on a pvp server the problem comes is that you're gonna have a lot of people a lot of groups on each every server which are going to be actual clans so if you are alone and you just pop into this server and you start building stuff there is a high chance you're going to run into people in groups and the worst thing those people are going to be very high item level meaning they can pretty much destroy you in a few hits and there is nothing you can do you can escape um, this game allows you to escape uh, those fights because you do have some abilities and generally if you start running away there is a high chance that you are going to escape because a person cannot really follow you that fast that you think someone can follow you but at the same time the problem is if you have a group of four people who are gathering resources for the entire day obviously they can yield more resources which means more dynamite and more dynamite means they can bust through your castle destroy everything and basically everything that you were trying to do alone as your own one guy is kind of ruined right now because you cannot really fight against four people one one on one it can work one on two sometimes it can work but everything above that there is no chance you're going to survive and if they see your castle you're pretty much screwed because there is a lot of griefing on those pvp servers and because you can place the castle almost anywhere on the map except some areas which are obviously going to be those pve areas where you have different camps of bandits or villages or whatever the thing is you can have choke points of people actually placing the castle in some areas that you need to cross or enter to go through certain resources so because this is a map which doesn't change so there are no vibes in this game so far so when you're thinking about rust gameplay there is like a vibe that people set either every seven days ten days a month two weeks whatever v rising doesn't have that so what does that mean if someone builds a castle and they reinforce it in, in some areas that you really need to go and cross on a pvp server it can be problematic and every time you cross there is a high chance you're going to be griefed or raided or you're going to be ganked by people who are a lot stronger than you and when you create like this choke point where you cannot gather some resources in one guy it basically draws people away from the game because they're like how do i progress now because there are some areas that you really need to visit to progress and if people close out that area it can be extremely problematic and it's going to be very interesting to see how are they going to solve like uh, how the servers work because if you're a new player as i said you join a server 
especially a PvP server, that server is already established. If it's not a new server, you're kind of going down, my friend, because those people already have like max level, they have all of the explosives they need, and once you start building your small castle, they will 100% raid you. But at the same time, if you want a more chill experience, you can go for those PvE servers. Now keep in mind, even in the PvE servers, you can have people who are going to create some choke points that um, you cannot cross and it's gonna be problematic to get you to those resources, but at the same time, it's not as toxic as it is on a PvP server itself. But that's when it comes to that, when it comes to the game itself, when it comes to combat, when it comes to gathering resources, building your own castle, fighting different bosses, honestly it was very enjoyable for me, but I like these sort of games, because it has a lot of interesting mechanics which really fit into this game and something which I haven't really thought that they're gonna be going with. For example, during the day, if you're standing out in the sun, you will take damage because, well, you're a vampire, so it changes the dynamic of the game. But every single shade you have on the map throughout the day, that's your safe haven. That's how you can move around, basically staying in the shadows and avoiding sun. Now, obviously, there is this buffer. Every time you go out in the sun, there is going to be a few seconds until you start taking damage, and that will de uh, depend on what kind of armor you have what kind of cloaks you have that you can later on get as you're fighting stronger bosses. But at the same time, it's a very interesting mechanic, which uh, makes sense definitely because, you know, as a vampire, you cannot stay out in the sun. So most of the stuff you're going to be doing, most bosses you're going to be fighting and raiding is going to be during the night. Generally, it's not too tedious. Um, I think the night and day cycle in this game is relatively fast. You know, sometimes it can be problematic. Sometimes, you know, you're going to say, well, I need more time. This is just not enough. But uh, at the same time, as night passes, uh, the day will pass relatively fast. But even then, you can use shadows to move throughout the map itself. Now, as I talked about those abilities that you get from bosses, keep in mind those abilities can also be obviously used against PvE opponents and bots, which can be kind of difficult to fight. I mean, when it comes to AI of these, uh, you know, NPCs, it's uh, it's good. I mean, they can do a lot of damage if you're not careful, especially some of the spells they have and some of the abilities they have, they can really go after you. And keep in mind, each one of those, like, stronger opponents has their own abilities. They can stun you, they can counter you, they can incapacitate you, so a lot of uh, mechanics which were present actually in Battle right itself. And as I said, each biome is gonna have different stuff that you can collect and go through and fight different enemies, and there is a decent variety overall when you think about like different areas and what kind of enemies you generally fight. As I said, when it comes to boss fights, a lot of those bosses feel different and they have different attacks, which um, kind of make the game a little bit more fresh because it, it will take you some time until you defeat stronger bosses. Now, obviously, as you do all of that, as you gather your resources, you go back to your castle and you start building up your castle. Your castle can be relatively huge later on when you upgrade everything and when you start doing different stuff. Keep in mind, the castle you're seeing here is relatively small compared to what castles people have later on in Endgame, which can be incredibly uh, big. Now, at the same time, uh, you have different abilities which uh, are given to you as you defeat your those bosses. So not every single boss is going to be unlocking you different objects for you to, you know, build in your castle, but they will give you different abilities, like for example, wolf form, bear form, bat form. By that bat form, you can actually go and fly across the map more easily so you don't have to follow those uh, paths and everything. So the dynamic of the game changes a little bit as you progress later on, and there is definitely a very good character prog progression just because you unlock more abilities you can fight with different people especially when you unlock ulties and all of that keep in mind generally the game is polished to the point where i haven't really experienced any game breaking bugs or that i had crashes i mean a few times the server is going to hiccup and that's also a big thing which i want to say this game is always online even if you're playing on your own you know custom world that you created you have to be online to play it now, the Stunlock developers have promised that they will be giving an offline server and an offline play. So far, that's not available, so if you want to play this, you must be always online. Keep that in mind. But honestly, when it comes to this, it can be incredibly enjoyable if you like these sort of titles, especially if you like uh, the survival crafting PvE slash PvE. Now, PvP is, again, as I said, problematic because usually you're going to get ganked, usually you're going to run into a lot of people and those people are going to be griefing you, 
There is obviously some servers which have normal people playing so you can negotiate some stuff but at the same time there is up to 50 people on each server uh, and you know during like PvE you can request help maybe they'll help you. I actually had a very a few nice encounters on a PvE server where some guy was fighting a boss and I helped him and then later on we exchanged some resources like for example he needed some copper I needed some other stuff so we exchanged that so there is definitely some uh, quality when it comes to that interacting with other people because there is also uh you know voice wipe in this game so you can talk to people in game if you want honestly when it comes to like different people i didn't have any problems i didn't have issues but when it comes to other servers obviously you're going to base your opinion on the people playing there and at the same time, keep in mind, this is an early access game, but for an early access game, you can spend a lot of time in this game to finish everything. And it wasn't really looking like an early access title, and I do believe that um, even if they release this as a full title, like people wouldn't complain. Now at the same time, as Stunlock has promised that they're gonna be updating the game and they're gonna be giving uh, new stuff throughout, uh, you know, different weeks and months and how they're gonna be, you know, working on everything. But so if you're planning on buying this, keep in mind, what you get for 20 euros or 20 dollars or your region equivalent is actually okay in my opinion and actually there is a lot here you can cover especially because again it's a 20 euro game and you have a lot of AAA titles who cost 60 euros who don't have this amount of content so yeah it's it's all right if you ask me but at the same time if you're looking for the those updates there is always a risk when you're buying an early access game thinking if a developer is going to update that or maybe developer won't update that you know it all comes down with that risk but uh, honestly i was satisfied with the amount of content i get you know i got for for this amount of money but um everything further on is definitely going to be that cherry on the top which i hope stunlock is going to take seriously but look overall fighting is fun abilities are fun you know this game is generally fun for me and uh, that's just what i think about it so hopefully you enjoy this review that's some of the pluses i have for this game some of the minuses i have for this game uh you know some people are gonna have a hard time going into this but um at the same time i would definitely recommend going into a pve server first and not bothering with a pvp server because um yeah you're gonna have a hard time if you don't know how something works and because you already have established people on on that server you know you kind of get at the mercy of those people if they're gonna be attacking you or not but in most cases i noticed that yeah they do attack you a lot but tell me down below what do you think about all of this and don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more videos and also as i said you know tell me what do you think about it below in the comments do you like it do you dislike it what are some of the pluses you have what are some of the minuses you have tell me down below and also check us out on twitter and discord and huge thanks to my current patreon supporters this is lkm signing out stay classy everyone and i'll talk to you next time bye bye